Hello, we're going to talk about full mouth reconstruction, increasing vertical dimension. Now this is not for sissies, it's like a heart transplant. You don't want to just wade into this if you don't have any training. But this is going to go through the techniques that I teach dentists when I had my teaching, my hands-on teaching center in Dallas of reconstructing people, usually their severe wear, increasing vertical dimension. Now there was a famous dentist years ago that wrote a book and said, never increase vertical dimension. Well, I restored this case about 30 something years ago and I increased his vertical dimension. I actually published it, published the case. And the reason I increased his vertical was because I said, what? I can't restore this case without increasing vertical. I did periodontal crown lengthening and opened his bite because I had to have some room to end up with this situation. Again, this one, there's a million rest reasons why we increase vertical. You have to get some space to increase even the incisal and inclusal, occlusal plane. So you can also buy these books if you want to. So anyway, I went into that case. I was probably in my 30s back then and thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna kill this guy. So I left him in a non-removable night guard for six months thinking you probably die if you increase someone's vertical. Since then, I've increased vertical dimension hundreds of times when I needed it, not casually, but when I needed it. And all patients are like, oh man, that feels fabulous because you do actually lose vertical dimension. I'm gonna say that again you do actually lose vertical dimension and you can increase it. I don't increase it more than three millimeters in the anterior because if you've got to fill that space in with restorative material. And I don't want to, if you, I don't want to cantilever anything off of the lower incisor teeth more than a couple of millimeters. And then you've got to fill in the palatal of the maxillary teeth by a couple of millimeters to split the difference in the increased vertical. So three to four millimeters is the maximum I increase vertical dimension in the anterior. And remember there's a three to one ratio between anterior teeth and second molars. So if you increase the vertical dimension between the second molars a millimeter, you're gonna open the bite three millimeters in the anterior. If you increase the vertical dimension two millimeters between the second molar teeth, you're going to open the bite six millimeters, three to one ratio between the central incisors. So I don't ever open the vertical more than three to four millimeters in the anterior, and I'll show you how to do it. If you increase vertical dimension, you've got to restore all the teeth in at least one arch. You have to restore all the teeth in at least one arch. If you restore maxillary teeth, you have to place crowns on all the teeth. You can't place veneers on them because remember the mandibular anterior teeth are contacting the palatal surface of the maxillary anterior teeth. So you have to fill in that palatal surface of the maxillary anterior teeth with restorative material. So you have to put a crown on the maxillary anterior teeth. The only teeth you can veneer if you're increasing vertical dimension are the mandibular anterior teeth because you're only increasing or filling a space on the incisal edges of the teeth. You don't want to cantilever four millimeters of restorative material though off of the incisal edge of the anterior teeth. You don't want to cantilever more than about two millimeters off of the natural, the prep tooth. So that's why I say I limit increasing vertical dimension to no more than four millimeters in the anterior region. If I'm increasing vertical dimension, I want to restore all the teeth in the mouth. So it'll be crowns on all the maxillary teeth, anterior and posterior, crowns on all the posterior mandibular teeth and veneers on the mandibular anterior teeth. Only the an mandibular anterior teeth from cuspid to cuspid can be veneered and the reason they can be veneered is because on the maxillary anterior teeth you're filling in space on the palatal surface of the tooth. That's where 
the mandibular anterior teeth contact the maxillary anterior teeth. They don't contact end to end. This woman had, most of these patients are gonna be severe wear cases. So it's imperative they have a night guard, sometimes a mandibular and a maxillary night guard, but at least a maxillary night guard because whatever they did to their teeth, they're gonna do once you restore the teeth. Remember, restoring the teeth ideally does not make a person stop grinding their teeth at night when they're sleeping. They're gonna to continue to grind, so you've gotta keep the teeth from contacting tooth to tooth, and you do that with a night guard or a dental sleep apnea snoring device like I wear. You can see all the grinding. I first treated this patient for a TMJ problem, then she said, what, about my, what can we do about my teeth? You can see just a bunch of patched up work, just catch as catch can. That's why I'm such a proponent of a comprehensive exam and consultation prior to beginning anything. Anytime I see a new patient, before I do any, any definitive work other than get them out of pain, if they had a toothache or something, we might do that. But I don't want to begin any definitive work crowns, uh, anything, until I know what we're getting into and what the situation is. If they have a TMJ problem, I want to know it before I keep their mouth open for a couple of hours. If they've got periodontal disease, if they've got a bunch of other teeth that have got bad situations. I use sedation every morning, and most mornings I see a patient from 8 in the morning until 1 or 2 in the afternoon and they've got an IV and they're sedated with Versed and Demerol. So you can get a lot done at one time. So especially if the patient's gonna be sedated, I wanna know, even if they're not, I wanna know what is going on and them to understand their situation prior to beginning any definitive work. So watch my video in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com on the new patient exam in consultation. So see just a lot of stuff here, big old leaky fillings. And you know, so many times in a practice, the only thing that gets attention is a broken tooth or a painful tooth. Well, that's not a good way to save teeth for a lifetime. Examine everything. It's kind of like that car. You know, if you're driving to Alaska or California, which part of the car do you want to work? All of it. Well, these teeth have got to last this person a lifetime. So if you've got cracked teeth, leaky fillings, don't, don't be reactive, in my opinion, be proactive. Give the patient a chance to fix it before it breaks. Well, this is how I increase vertical dimension. I put a cotton tip applicator between the front teeth and tip it down just a little bit, and that's three to four millimeters between the anterior teeth, and I take an occlusal registration record with the patient's condyles in centric relation at this vertical and then wax it up at that vertical dimension. So this is gonna be my working vertical. This is the bite position, which is a little bit open, that I'm gonna restore all the teeth. So this is this lady before and after. So crowns on all the maxillary teeth, veneers on the lower anterior teeth, crowns on the, this is the upper. See, everything's got crowns. This is the lower crowns on the posterior teeth. And in this case, I think she had an old crown on these, these cuspids, veneers on the lower anterior teeth, tooth display with lips in repose. You always wanna see some incisal of the maxillary anterior teeth when the patient goes, uh, you can watch my video on fundamentals of aesthetics in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com. This was her ahead of time. This is smiling. This is closed together. You can see how so many of the wrinkles of the face have gone away when she's lightly, when she's squeezing her teeth together because we've opened her bite just a little bit. It's very comfortable to the patient. I restored her probably 20 years ago. And she said, oh, that feels fabulous. I've never had a patient that I increased their vertical in centric relation occlusion with proper eccentric movements that didn't say it feels fabulous. So I don't even worry about that. Another case, had some old restorations on her maxillary teeth and just beat the heck out of her lower teeth. And she said, I just hate the way my teeth look and I wanna get rid of these crowns, these old ugly crowns on her front teeth upper teeth. Had some old restorations, just patch up on the back. That's why if you 
do a comprehensive exam like I show you how to do with photography in that video in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com and you use these books, get some other books if you want to get some other ones, but that show pathology and then how you, what the pathology looks like and then restorative cases before and after and then use PowerPoint cases. When the patient sees their teeth, they're going to go, oh my gosh, that's a broken filling and decay. You know, these, this thing is leaking like a sieve. You know, these are just beat to heck. So I'm increasing her vertical again, three to four millimeters with that cotton tip applicator, and I put it between the teeth and pull it up just a little bit, and that gives me just a little over three to four millimeters. Then I wax it up at that vertical dimension. So this is my working vertical right here. This is how much I've opened the bite in the uh, anterior. Now look at what the occlusion is going to be like. These teeth are going to be contacting the palatal surface of the maxillary anterior teeth. So the palatal surface of the, of the maxillary anterior teeth is going to be contacting the incisal surface of the restored mandibular anterior teeth. So you're filling in about a millimeter and a half or two cantilevered off the incisal edge of the natural teeth and about a millimeter and a half or two off the palatal of the maxillary anterior teeth. And then as you go toward the second molar teeth, you have less bite opening because you have a three to one ratio between the maxillary central and the maxillary and mandibular central incisors and the second molar T. So if this is increased three and a half to four millimeters, the second molar is going to have an open bite of about a millimeter to two. So this is the restored case, veneers on the mandibular anterior teeth, crowns on all the maxillary teeth, and the mandibular posterior teeth crowns on all the maxillary teeth and the mandibular posterior teeth, veneers on the mandibular anterior teeth. Another case, this lady had crowded teeth. She had some tetracycline stain. She had some missing teeth. She was what I call good-hearted woman. She'd put her money into her kids and just had never taken time for herself. And so she said, now it's my turn. You see some crowding, missing teeth here missing tooth, okay, old fillings, crowding up here. So we could restore this without orthodontics. Now, in a case like this, if these teeth have been missing for a while, you may have to equilibrate the teeth if they've super erupted into this edentulous space. You know, you want to equilibrate them so that the incisal and occlusal plane are proper. Every now and then you may even have to do endodontics on a tooth that's over super erupted if you have to equilibrate it and then you have to prep it for a crown. So you might have to perform endodontics. So I'm increasing our vertical dimension again. Same technique every time. Waxing it up. This are before and after. Veneers on the mandibular anterior teeth. Crowns on all the maxillary teeth and the mandibular posterior teeth. Implants in the areas that were missing teeth before and after. Implant down here. Implants, veneers, crowns. The woman had had restorations on her teeth and snapped this one off at the gum line. So I'm going to end up placing an implant here, implants down here, and restoring all the other teeth because she had a deep bite. Wanted to get see how deep that bite is. You can take some of the pressure off those anterior teeth. You open them just a bit. So she had a bunch of crowns on the teeth. We decided we were going to replace those, increasing vertical again. Here she is after we've restored her. So we've got an implant replacing upper left central. It's an implant. These are implants down here. This is a supra gingival. There's crown. There's no reason to take that down to the gingival line. If there's no decay on that tooth, just keep it clean upper, all the teeth are crowned on the maxillary arch, replacing those crowns, and then replacing crowns on the mandibular teeth or new crowns. And so these are implants. Here, this is her left side. Remember, it's taken in a mirror. 
Then we've got veneers on the anterior mandibular anterior teeth. So these are implants, these three. This is a super gingival crown. There's no reason to take it. Take the margin of the crown down to here. Keep it in enamel if you can, because that's not in the aesthetic zone. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Are you feeling stuck? You know you have more to offer and you can elevate higher in your dentistry practice, but you just don't know how to do it. Well, great news. DentistryMasterclasses.com is here for you. At DentistryMasterclasses.com, Dr. Kerberth is offering his greatest work and his best cases. Here is everything included when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. You will get incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and the Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference. You will get before and after pictures of Dr. Cutper's fantastic restored cases. And guess what? All of this is 40 bucks a month. That's right, 40 bucks a month. This is an opportunity you cannot miss. Go to dentistrymasterclasses.com and subscribe today.